Welcome to another Ziva math video. In this video, we are going to solve two step equations. Our steps and process are going to be the same as when we solved one step equations. We are going to use the inverse operation to isolate the variable and make sure that we keep both sides of the equation balanced. Let's see how this works in our examples. Our first example, we have 4x plus 5 equals 29, and our basic steps and process are going to be the same. We want to ultimately isolate x, and when we did this with one-step equations, we put a box around the x, but this is a two-step equation. We have 4x, we have 4 times x, and we have to start by keeping that together. Ultimately, we are going to isolate x, but for now, the 4 and the x are one piece. And if you want to put that line down the center of your equal sign so that you can keep your left hand side and right hand side separate and see that you are doing the same things to both sides, that's really helpful. So with that thought of keeping the 4x together, we have to start by isolating 4x and we're going to do that by using our inverse operation. We had plus 5 so we're going to have to subtract 5. We don't want anything else on the left hand side with our 4x. If we subtract 5 from the left we also have to subtract 5 from the right. Now the 4x we haven't done anything to it. It's still in our problem exactly the way it is. 5 minus 5 is 0 and that's going to equal on the right hand side 29 minus 5 which is 24. And so that step gets us to having 4x on the left by itself and we're going to simplify this step up because 4x plus 0 is 4x. So we're going to have 4x on the left equals on the right in that line we didn't do anything to the 24 so the 24 is still exactly the same. Now you have 4x equals 24 and this is a one-step equation. So if boxing that x you can see what your isolating is helpful. You can do that. We have 4x which means we need to divide by 4 to get x by itself. If I divide the left hand side by 4 I need to divide the right hand side by 4. On the left those 4 simplify out which is what leaves me with x by itself equals 24 divided by 4 on the right, 24 divided by 4 is 6. So x equals 6. And just like we did with one-step equations, we can check these. So we're going to check them just the same. We're going to take what we got for x, the 6. We're going to substitute it for x in the equation, and we're going to check that we get a true statement. So instead of x, I'm going to put in the 6. So I'm going to have 4 times 6 plus 5. And does that really equal 29? Well, 4 times 6 is 24. And we need to add 5 to that. So I'm going to have 24 plus 5. And I'm proving that equals 29. Well, 24 plus 5 is 29. So I get 29 equals 29, which proves that x does equal 6. So my work is correct. Remember, if you don't get 29 equals 29, then you made a mistake somewhere in your problem and you need to go work it again. But in this case, we are correct and x equals 6. For our second example, we have 30 equals 8v minus 2. Notice we put the variable on the right-hand side, but our steps to solve this aren't going to change. We have 8 times v. That's what I'm going to box because that's what I need to get by itself first. And that line through my equal sign is going to help us keep both sides balanced. So I want to get 8v by itself. Right now I have 8v minus 2. So to get it by itself, I'm going to need to add 2. I need to do that inverse operation. And if I add 2 to the right hand side, I have to add 2 to the left hand side. And I'm going to start on the left. I have 30 plus 2. 30 plus 2 is 32. And that equals, on the right, 8v. We haven't done anything to it. It's still in our problem exactly how it is. And then we have minus 2 plus 2. So negative 2 plus 2 
is zero. And for my next step, I wanna go ahead and simplify this line. I haven't done anything to the 32, so it's there exactly the same. And on the right-hand side, I have 8v plus zero, which equals 8v. And now what you have is a one-step equation. So if you wanna go ahead and box the v, because now it's time to isolate v all by itself. And we're going to do that by dividing both sides because we have eight times v. So we're gonna divide both sides by eight in order to get v by itself. And on the right-hand side, these eights are going to simplify out, leaving me with just the v. And on the left-hand side, we have 32 divided by 8. 32 divided by 8 is 4. So I get v equals 4. And remember, you can go and check these. I'm not going to do it for this problem, but if you want to check, then you're going to take 30 equals 8v minus 2, and we're going to substitute the 4 that we got for v. For our third example, we'll do one more problem where we have a coefficient multiplied by our variable before switching to division. So this example, we have 5m plus 3 equals 13. And we are going to put a box around our 5m because that's what we're going to need to isolate first. And then we'll want to put that line through our equal sign to make sure that whatever we do on the left, we do on the right. So our first step is gonna to be to get 5m by itself. I have 5m plus three, so our inverse is to subtract. We're gonna subtract three because we want 5m by itself. So I've subtracted three from the left. I'll need to subtract three from the right. So 5m, we haven't done anything to it. It's still exactly the way it is. And 3 minus 3 is 0. Equals, on the right-hand side, we have 13 minus 3 is 10. So the next step, I want to simplify this line. So I have 5m plus 0 is 5m. Equals, on the right, I didn't do anything to the 10. So 5m equals 10. Now I'm set up to solve a one-step equation. So if you want to box your m, because that's what we need to isolate this time, we have 5 times m. To get m by itself, we're going to be dividing, and we're going to divide by 5. If I divide the left by 5, I need to divide the right-hand side of my equation by 5 as well. So the 5s do simplify out on the left-hand side. 5m divided by 5 is m. And on the right hand side, I have 10 divided by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And again, remember, you can go and check these, although I'm not going to do that in this example. You're going to take the 2 that you got and you'll substitute it for m to check. But in this example, we have m equals 2. So for our next example, we have w over 3 plus 6 equals 10. And ultimately, we do want to isolate that variable w. But for right now, it's with that 3. It's w divided by 3. And that's what we're going to box first, because we need to get w divided by 3 alone first. And to do that, we are going to have to subtract 6 from both sides, because we had w over 3 plus 6. Our inverse is to subtract 6. So I'll subtract 6 from the left and 6 from the right. So on the left hand side that leaves me with w over 3 plus 6 minus 6 is 0. So plus 0 equals on the right I have 10 minus 6 and 10 minus 6 is 4. For my next step I want to simplify this line w over 3 plus 0 is w over 3. And on the right-hand side, the 4, we didn't do anything to it in that step. So we have w over 3 equals 4. Now we're ready to put a box around that w and isolate our variable. So we have w over 3 which remember means w divided by 3. So to get w by itself, we're going to need to multiply. And we're going to multiply both sides by the 3, because that's what w is being divided by. 
So we'll multiply on the left hand side, which means we'll need to multiply by three on the right hand side as well. On the left, those threes will simplify out, leaving us with just W. So that got our variable alone on the left. And then on the right, we have four times three and four times three is 12. So we get W equals 12. And we can check these just like we checked our other two step equations. We're gonna go back to that original equation, W over three plus six equals 10. And instead of W, we're going to substitute the 12 that we got for W. So we'll have 12 divided by three plus six equals 10. And we need to prove that that is a true statement to show that our steps and our work and our solution are therefore correct. So we have 12 over 3. 12 over 3 is 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we have 4 plus 6 equals 10. And 4 plus 6 does equal 10. So we get 10 equals 10 which is a true statement, so we know that our solution of w equals 12 is correct. So remember, if we didn't get 10 equals 10, we made a mistake somewhere and we need to go solve our problem again. For our next example, we have 3 equals x over 5 minus 7. Note that we put the variable on the right, but our steps aren't going to change. So we have x over 5, and that's the part that we want to box first because that's the part that we're going to need to keep as one piece. So the next step you might want to do is to place the line down the equal sign so that you can keep track of what you're doing to the left and the right and making sure you keep both sides balanced. So if we want to keep x over 5 together right now, that's the part that we need to get by itself. We have x over 5 minus 7. So our inverse operation is going to be to add 7. If I add 7 to the right, then I'm going to need to add 7 to the left as well. So looking at the left hand side, I have 3 plus 7 and 3 plus 7 is 10 equals on the right hand side. Now I have x over 5 because I haven't done anything to that part of our problem yet. And I have negative 7 plus 7, which is 0. And this is what's going to get our x over 5 by itself. So I have 10 equals x over 5 plus 0. And the next step I want to take is to simplify this line. Well, on the left, I haven't done anything to the 10 in that step, so the 10 is still exactly how it is. And on the right-hand side, I have x over 5 plus 0. x over 5 plus 0 equals x over 5. So now I have 10 equals x over 5. I have a one-step equation. And now that I have a one-step equation, we're going to want to put the box around x because now I can isolate x and get my variable all by itself. I have x divided by 5, so my inverse operation is going to be to multiply, and I'm going to multiply by 5 because that's what I divided my variable by. If I multiply by 5 on the right, then I'm going to need to multiply by 5 on the left. So looking at that right-hand side, these 5s, are going to simplify out. So x over 5 times 5, the 5s will simplify out, leaving me with just x on the right. And that's going to equal, on the left, now I have 5 times 10. 5 times 10 is 50. So I get 50 equals x. And remember, you can always go back and check these by substituting what you got for x back into that original equation. For our next example, we have p plus 3 over 6 equals 4, or p plus 3 divided by 6 equals 4. So as you notice, the p plus 3 is grouped together because all of that is what's being divided by 6. So when we think about what we need to isolate in our first step, the p plus 3 is what needs to stay together. So that's what I'm going to box up. And then if you want to add that line through your equal sign so that you can make sure that whatever you do on the left-hand side, you do the same thing on the right-hand side and keep 
your equation balance, that can be very helpful. So like we just said, we group the P plus 3. We're wanting to keep the P plus 3 together for now, and their P plus 3 is being divided by 6. So our inverse operation is going to be multiplication. We're going to multiply by 6 because we want the P plus 3 all by itself. So if I multiply the left-hand side by 6, I also need to multiply the right-hand side by 6. On the left, then, those sixes are going to simplify out during my multiplication step. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to be left with the P plus 3. And on the right-hand side, I'll have 4 times 6, and 4 times 6 is 24. So I have P plus 3 equals 24. And if you notice, now you have a one-step equation. So my next step is going to be to isolate my variable. I'm ready to get p all by itself. So if boxing that variable is helpful to you, now is the time to do that. So I have p plus 3, so my inverse operation is going to be to subtract, and I'm going to be subtracting 3. If I subtract 3 from the left, I need to subtract 3 from the right, and so I'll subtract 3 from both sides. So p, I've not done anything to p. So I have p plus 3 minus 3 is 0. So p plus 0 equals, now on the right-hand side, 24 minus 3, which is 21. And my next step, all I'm left with is to simplify this line because p plus 0 is p. And on the right-hand side, I didn't do anything to the 21 in this step, so p equals 21. And remember, if you want to be checking your work, you can always substitute what you got for your variable, in this case 21, back into that original equation and make sure you get a true statement. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Ziva Math for more videos.